Hey guys, welcome back. So in the last one, we went ahead and set up Django. We made sure it's running on our system. Now we are going to go ahead and pick up something else. So I'm gonna finish this one off. Now, we are going to now start with setting up Postgres to persist data. Python comes with SQLite 3 and Django basically ships with the, with the database setup. If you can see in our project structure, we have this, this file called db.sqlite 3. So this is what comes default on, on, on a fresh Django project, but for the most of the times, it's not always going to be optimal to use SQLite. So we are going to go ahead and, and install Postgres. I'm going to show you how to install it on a map. Let's search for Postgres. And you can click on the, the first result in the search. So just click download. And then it should take us to the download page. Once you get here, then you're going to have to select like your operating system. So if you're on Windows, choose Windows. If you're on Linux, choose Linux. If you're on Mac, just click Mac. And then we should be able to go to here. So once you're here, they are going to suggest different ways to install to install it. One of the ways is to use Postgres.app. So another way is to use the installer. I'm going to go with the installer way because I know that's going to be common for even people using Windows. So when you come to the the download page, now if you you can select your system here. So I'm going to go ahead and select mine. So I'm using macOS and I'll choose the latest one. On Windows, you can select that. It's going to go ahead and install it. The download should start. Uh, I want to keep it. Okay, so it's, you see, it's, it's going to download. Now, once the download is done, you're going to have this installer. Double click on it so it can open. Then double click on the app. Then wait for the steps gonna ask us if you are sure about what we're doing of course we are and enter your password then let it continue so we get this setup wizard now we are going to uh, click next everywhere so next next so it's gonna tell us that it's gonna use uh, the super user database will be Postgres, the port, and this other information. Click next on it. So continue. So once this is done, it's going to tell us to launch that builder. Then it's going to optionally show us that it's going to install some, some other things. But we basically don't need a lot, so just uncheck that and then click finish. So basically, this will finish up, and now we can search for PG Admin. So when you search for it, you're going to find it. When you click on it, it's going to launch. So as it launches, basically, like I mentioned, this is like a graphical way of, of accessing your data. Everything in Postgres gives you an easier way of managing them. So it's going to ask us to enter a master password. So here, just enter. Um, you can actually click. Uh, you can actually click reset password, and then it's going to remove all seven passwords. That's fine. Then you need to set one for PG admin. So I'm going to set one to be password. Then click OK. So once that's done, then now you can click on servers. Then we need to enter the password to connect. So remember earlier, we were presented with an interface where we saw that the default, the default super user, super user database would be Postgres. And then we previously set the password. So use the password you just set. And now you're going to have like all your, all your, your, your databases here. So it happened that I have some, mostly for the most part, you're going to not be having one. So now that we are here, you can actually now click create database. Then you can give it a name. So I'm going to call ours income expenses db. D 
db like that income expenses db fine the owner is supposed to grace so then click save and then the database should be created see here it is and then we literally have nothing there so now we are going to need to connect to it in our application let me put up the terminal down so when you, you open up your project then you're going to find you have like a manage py file then in the main project folder there is a settings.py file so in here it's where we we do that like the database connect connection from so you can scroll down and then you're going to get somewhere where you have databases so like this so now we need to basically change this and then use use the like postgres itself we're going to see that switch it up for postgres now the engine for postgres is going to be django.db.backends.postgresql so we change this to postgresql postgresql okay so once that's done then we need to provide a database name so remember earlier we created a database and called it income expenses db so we're going to switch this to income expenses db then now we need to provide other things like the, the user then the password and the host so host to do that provide another key here call it user call it user capital letters then <clears throat> remember our default user is called postgres so we can connect using that our database is called postgres we can connect using that then the password then to set the password also need a key called password then to the password so earlier the password that we used was password then now about the host we also need to set it and then our host of course is local host so about the the port itself postgres is going to to like by default look at port 53 which is the one that we saw so if you changed it you're going to have to specify the port here and do like port then you add like 5432 like that but we didn't change it so i'm just going to ignore it for now and now we need to run our application and see if it's connecting so now okay yeah. so now if you go in your terminal and you run the application again so python monitor py oh i need to cd into the project and my passion environment is not is not running uh, so cd into the expenses website So it is our manage.py is there. Now we can run Python manage.py run server. Oh, so it's gonna tell us we need to have PsychoPG2 installed. So to PsychoPG2 basically <coughs> will be so the project is going to need to use it. So to get that module, to get the module, you can install it using PPNV. But I want to first bring it up a bit so I can show you one of the problems you might run into and how you can like get around them. So if you go to Psycho PG2, so here you can see that the latest version is 2.8.5. So I've had like, a lot of issues with this version. I'm unable to like compatibly use it in, in, in Django project. So what I usually do is come to release history and then I install 2.7.7. So get this one, then we need to install it. So PPMF, like we usually do, and you can get that. Then we need to press PPM. So install it. It's gonna take some time. So once the installation is done, now we can run, run server again. And you can see, we basically connect to our our database and if we check out our application it should run the same which is good now one thing i want to show you guys is to 
how to not like had got these database credentials in the, in the settings py file so normally when you push like this to version control this will directly go into the everyone will be able to see all the credentials here so to hide them away we are going to put them in a, in a dot m file which is like <laughs> a file that you're not going to be pushing to to version control so write dot m then you're going to need to export some some variables here so one of them is going to be you can actually call them like db name so db underscore name because then now you put the value so here the, the syntax is you don't have to put them in strings they are by default it's going to be passed as a string so bring it like that then the second one will be the db user so export let's export export db user so this one is going to be postgres then of course i'll figure out substitute those values later so the password same thing export db password okay use a db user password okay see the user Okay, so then the other one will be the host, which most of the times will be local host, but we might as well add it in the environment so we can easily switch it if we need to switch the environment. So db host, because this is local host. So this is password, this is password. Oh no, this is local host. Then now we can come and substitute this. So here we have to use to load them in from the environment. So we're going to use the OS module, which is already imported here. So now you can do like OS. Oh, sorry. Now you can come to our database section. Then you replace this with OS dot environment dot get. Then you put the key. So the key here is the DB name. So you can come and switch it up then the same thing for the user so copy paste it then the user of course now will be db user we press it like that the password same thing password will be always dot environment get the password so put the password there like that in the first of course any idea so this would be os environment.get host starts so then past past the db host because we missed a comma here and we need some spaces here we basically need to have some linting also so once you have that now you can like rerun the, the application again so python Manage py python manage py oh, interesting ls so we need cd back ls here yeah. okay so manage the py is here so run python manage the py run so it, it's not picking the password and i think that's because it's not seeing that dot m5 dot m it's uh, let's try to source it in again although uh, so to source it in, let me do this. env. Okay, so now it's it's not complaining anymore. So if I run again, Python run manage the run server, you can see that everything is working again. It's connecting, and the application is uh, up and running. So with that said, if you enjoy the video, if you, if you're following along, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel so you can always be notified when we make a new video i'll see you guys in the next video bye